Hello and welcome to Alexpo and Antonio Conte is the new Tottenham manager. On Monday, Spurs decided to sack Nuno Espirito Santo. By Tuesday, they appointed his replacement, Antonio Conte. The Italian is back in the Premier League, back since his spell with Chelsea where he won the title. Back after nearly joining Tottenham the summer but deciding not to, he is finally back in England. He is finally the Tottenham manager and Tottenham can finally maybe even win a trophy in the next few years. But how will Conte get on at Tottenham Hotspur? Using Football Manager 2021, I'm going to find out. Let's dive into this simulation and see how Antonio Conte gets on now he's back in the Premier League with Tottenham. Okay, here we are at the start of the simulation and as you can see, Antonio Conte is the Tottenham manager. He signed an 18-month deal in reality on this simulation. I've given him a two-year contract because we're not midway through the season. You'll notice I'm using FM21 instead of FM22. That's simply because with the game only being at the beta stage for FM22, we haven't got the editor, means I can't put Conte in charge. So unfortunately, you're just going to have to settle with FM21. But it's still the current Tottenham team. They've still got the new signs. Your likes of Galini, your likes of Emerson Royale, all the new boys and the old guard as well. Harry Kane, Son Heung-min and an out-of-form Deli Ali. But can Antonio Conte get a tune out of this underperforming Spurs side? A Spurs side who've just done nothing since Maurizio Pochettino left the club. They went with the big name in Jose Mourinho. There were a few highs, there were plenty of lows, and then they sacked him. Nuno couldn't really do much in his 10 games in charge, but he didn't really get much of a chance. Can Antonio Conte pick up the pieces and take Tottenham to the top of English football? or at least a little bit closer. Let's simulate a year into the future. Let's see how Antonio Conte gets on in his first year at Spurs. Right, here we are at the end of the first season, and as you can see, the Tottenham job is available. So Antonio Conte has either been sacked or he has been left. Tottenham finished sixth in the Premier League. They finished above Arsenal, which is, you know, not bad. They finished above Leicester as well, but they were bottom of the top six with Everton creeping in there and finishing a point above them to get into next season's Europa League. Tottenham once again having to settle for the Europa Conference League and that appears to have cost Antonio Conte his job. He was sacked after 326 days, just one year in charge and Antonio Conte has been sacked as Tottenham manager. So let's leave it there, that's the end of the video. No, I'm just messing with you. We can't leave it there, that's a pretty uninspiring video. Rather than do a deep dive into this, see where things went wrong, let's just give him another chance, shall we? Let's boot this simulation up again, let's go back to the start, let's rewrite history and give Antonio Conte a second chance at being the Tottenham manager. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the start and then I'm going to simulate a year into the future again. So when we rejoin ourselves here, it will be the 13th of June 2021 once again. But will Antonio Conte be the Tottenham manager this time? Let's find out. Okay, here we are, attempt number two, and Antonio Conte has survived. He has lasted a year in the Tottenham job, and that is because they have came fourth in the Premier League. Tottenham back in the Champions League, and once again, finishing above Arsenal. I mean, one of the big issues in this season, which has probably helped Tottenham, is the fact that Chelsea were all the way down in seventh. Tottenham have got into the top four, 73 points, only 13 points off top spot, and it's been a great season for Tottenham Hotspur. Harry Kane, one of the best players in the division, and Son Heung-min winning the Golden Boot with 24 goals, finishing three above your friend and mine, Burnley's Chris Wood. Let's check Tottenham out. Let's see what kind of formation they've been playing. And unsurprisingly, it has been the 3-5-2 that Antonio Conte absolutely loves. It looks like he's made a couple of signings too. He's made a few signings actually. We've had Masaccio come in, Daly Blind, Matez Vicino, Daniele Rugani, Sydney. A few signs have been made by the new Tottenham manager. But the wing backs, we've got Sergio Reguilon down the left and Emerson Royale down the right. I mean, Emerson probably hasn't been the first choice one considering he's only played 23 games in all competitions. It looks like Matt Doherty's actually been playing a lot more. He's got 30 starts to his name and an average rating of 7.03, which is fairly decent to be honest with you. And one of the biggest shocks for me is that Pierluigi Gallini has been the club's number one, and a damn good one at that, average rating 7.22. Meanwhile, Hugo Lloris has been spending his days on the bench. But the mighty strike duo of Son Heung-min and Harry Kane has massively delivered. In all competitions, they have got 52 goals between them. The absolute stars of this Tottenham team. Midfield looks like it's been a bit 
hit and miss, but defensively they've been solid. Davinson Sanchez has been good, Masaccio has been good, Diddy Blinn's been good. And Tottenham have had a good start to life with Antonio Conte on the touchline. See how they got on in the Cups, League Cup, they were knocked out in the fourth round by Manchester City, FA Cup beaten in the third round by Derby, which was poor. In the Europa League, they were beaten in the quarter-finals by Sevilla. But it's been a decent first season for Tottenham and Antonio Conte. You can see there they've done a fair bit of business since he came in, the biggest signing being Daily Blind, a fee potentially rising to £42.5 million, huge money. He's got rid of some players as well, he got rid of Lucas Moura on loan, he got rid of Brian Gill, he got rid of Joe Roden. A lot of changes happened at Tottenham within the first 12 months of Antonio Conte's tenure. But now he's going into his final year in charge. His contract's only until 2022, but if he can keep this up, he's surely bound to get himself another contract at Spurs. Will he want to say? Let's find out. Let's simulate another year into the future. Let's see how year two goes for Antonio Conte. Okay, here we are at the end of season two and Antonio Conte is still the Tottenham manager and for the second season in a row, he has guided Tottenham to a fourth place finish, keeping them in the Champions League once again. They were a bit further away from the title this season, but that's because Man City were just almost invincible. They only lost one game all season and got 93 points. As for Tottenham, they were fourth with 74. They were above Arsenal, they were above Chelsea, the best team in London. Son Heung-min back-to-back -back golden boots, Harry Kane closely following with 23, Kane once again one of the best players in the division. It looks like things are going very well for Antonio Conte and Tottenham, particularly for Son Heung-min and Harry Kane. I mean that duo up front are doing absolutely brilliantly. Antonio Conte has got himself a new contract as well, he has signed on for another 5 years. He's going to be here until 2027, until something massively goes wrong, which you know, considering it's Spurs, is highly likely. Let's see who he signed in Season 2. We've had a couple of loan deals made permanent. PLUG Gallini's a permanent signing. So is Christian Romero at the back. He's also brought in Presnel Kempembe, another centre-back. And he got Pedro Porro on loan from Manchester City, presumably to play as right wing-back. Some other players there arrived, Lewis Miller, Gustavo Asuncao, who we got rid of, he's got rid of Ben Davies, Eric Diet of Real Madrid somehow, that's absolutely madness. Lucas Moura's been sold, Bergwijn's been sold, Matt Doherty loaned out, and that appears to be it. Was there anyone at the back end of last season that we missed? Sydney, centre, centre West Ham after his brief flirtation with Tottenham Hotspur. Let's check them out, let's see what they've been playing, they're still going with the 3-5-2 formation. And once again, it's been all about Son Heung-min and Harry Kane. This season, 58 goals between them. Deli Ali's had a good season as well. He's hit double figures. Tange Ndombele's done well. Reguion at left wing back, great. Emerson at right wing back, great. It looks like it's a great time to be a Tottenham Hotspur fan. Not a good time to be Hugo Lloris. You're leaving the club. You're going back to Lyon, which is good for him, I guess. Are there any players who've disappointed? Davidson Sanchez hasn't played as much in Season 2. Neither has Matthias Ficino. Harry Winks, totally out of favour. Daily Blind, he's had a good season, which is good to see after his expensive, expensive arrival. Giovanni Lo Celso, poor, reduced to a substitute role. Matteo Masaccio, he's barely featured in Season 2. After playing quite an important role in Season 1. But overall for Tottenham Hotspur, Things have been pretty good, the new signings have done alright. And Antonio Conte's system appears to be suiting Son Young min and Harry Kane absolutely perfectly. Have they came close to any cup success? Let's have a look, see who they got in the Champions League. They were in a group alongside Juventus, Gladbach, and Zenit St. Petersburg. A group that they made it through, but they were beaten in the first knockout round by Atletico Madrid, FA Cup they were beaten in the quarterfinals by Manchester City and in the Carabao Cup they were also beaten in the quarterfinals, this time by Southampton on penalties. But in the league things have been good, they beat Arsenal away from home 3-1 in the North London derby, then the return fixture at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, it was an 0-0 draw but you know, it's better than losing. It was a slightly disappointing end of the season although I mean they got beat off Man City, beat off Liverpool, which is fine, and held the draws by Aston Villa, Newcastle and West Ham. So it could have been an even better season for Tottenham Hotspur had it not been for a sluggish end to the campaign.
But after the first simulation where Antonio Conte didn't even last a full year in charge, things are going much better in attempt two. Let's go into year three and see if this is the year that Antonio Conte can win a trophy for Tottenham Hotspur. Right here we are at the end of season three and for the third season in a row, Antonio Conte's Tottenham have finished fourth. They've got their lowest points tally so far, but with 68 points they finished above Chelsea and Arsenal to secure another season of Champions League football. And one thing, one of the funniest things in this season is that Newcastle were docked five points because of violation of budget rules. So good to see things are going well for the Magpies. As for Tottenham though, let's check them out. In fact, I didn't even look at the golden boots and whatnot. Son Heung-min with 20 goals, but he hasn't won the golden boot. But Harry Kane has been the best player in the division with an average rating of 8.1 and getting 12 player of the match awards. Of course, Antonio Cotney is still the captain Let's check there's been any cup success because that's kind of what we're after now. Champions League, they were in a group alongside Olympiacos, Zenit and Benfica, which they should have coasted through. And they have by the looks of things. They made it to the first knockout round where they played Antonio Conte's former side Inter Milan and battered them 5-1 over two legs. Then they got Real Madrid and that is where things ended. They lost 3-2 to Los Blancos, ending their Champions League dream at the quarter-final stage. And that is also where their FA Cup dream ended as well. They drew 1-1 with Aston Villa in the FA Cup quarter-final and they lost on penalties. As for the Carabao Cup, it was also a penalty shootout defeat and it was also in the quarter-final stage. So it's been another solid season for Spurs. Three Cup quarter-finals, another fourth-place finish and no real reasons for Daniel Levy to complain about Antonio Conte. In total, Son Heung-min got 28 goals. As for Harry Kane, 33 in all competitions. That makes 63 goals between him and Son Heung-min, which is a fantastic, sensational tally. Have there been any big signers? Let's have a little look. Just based on what I'm looking at here, I can't really see any major names that look to have arrived. The biggest appears to be Alexander Isaac from Real Sociedad, but I can't imagine he's played too much football. Only five starts in his first season at Tottenham and he's got seven Premier League goals. I mean, it's an okay tally considering he only started five games. They've also added Maicon from Shakhtar Donetsk, centre midfielder from Brazil, how's he got on? Fairly decent, done all right. And in terms of outgoings, obviously they got rid of Hugo Lloris, Giovanni Lo has been sold to Ajax, Joe Roden loaned out as well. Got rid of Matteo Masaccio, Oliver Skip loaned out, Davinson Sanchez was allowed to leave. And that seems to be about it for the major names. He's still using the 3-5-2 formation. It's still working an absolute treat. Deli Ali didn't get double figures, but he's doing all right. He's had another resurgence. He's 15 millionth of his career. Even Tanga and Dombele is doing okay. A bang on a seven. That is a picture of consistency, which is something I don't think's ever been said about Tanga and Dombele. But defensively, they look solid. The score and goals. The only thing they're not doing is winning trophies, but they are consistently getting in the Champions League, which has got to be considered some kind of progress for Tottenham Hotspur. How will Season 4 go? Let's find out. Right, here we are at the end of Season 4 of Antonio Conte at Spurs, and while they finish 6th in the Premier League, their trophy nightmare is over. Antonio Conte has delivered the FA Cup trophy to Tottenham Hotspur. They beat Liverpool 2-1 in the final. Harry Kane and Pierre-Emil Hoiberg with the goals, giving Tottenham their first trophy since they won the League Cup in 2008. 16 years later, and they have won another trophy. And it is all thanks to Antonio Conte. Elsewhere, they reached the quarter-finals of the Champions League. League Cup, they were beaten in the semi-finals by Manchester United, but for the Premier League, that's where the disappointment was. They have finished sixth, their lowest finish under Antonio Conte. 69 points, I mean, they were quite shy of getting in the Champions League, and that seems to be because Newcastle have had an absolutely sensational season, getting 83 points to leapfrog Man United, Chelsea, Tottenham, even Arsenal. They've climbed up the division and are now third in the Premier League, which is condemning Tottenham to a season of Europa League football. Harry Kane winning the Golden Boot, he's absolutely flying under Antonio Conte and he's even got himself a little trophy as well. Let's check the players out, let's see who the stars have been. And you're not going to believe it, it's Son Heung-min and it's Harry Kane. This time they have got 
55 goals between them. Harry Kane with 27 in all competitions. His average rating huge, 8.07. And Son Heung Min there with 28 goals, 7.66 average rating. In terms of transfers, they've made a strange one, getting Rob Holding for Olympiacos, the former Arsenal defender. The biggest name to arrive, Anthony Martial from Manchester United. How has he got on? Barely played, scored once. Absolute waste of money from Antonio Conte and Tottenham Hotspur. What a strange, strange signing. The biggest outgoing has been Pierluigi Gallini. He's gone to Newcastle for £58 million. So Antonio Conte has lost his goalkeeper, but he's got Wilkie Farinez playing in goal. Apologies, I've said that wrong. The Venezuelan is the new number one. £21 million, 10 clean sheets, average rating of 6.99. Not bad for a goalkeeper at all. But after four years, Antonio Conte has done it. He has won a trophy for Tottenham, but the caveat is they are no longer in the Champions League. Can he get back there in Season 5? Or could he even win himself another trophy? Let's see what happens. Let's go another year into the future. Right, here we are at the end of Season 5 of this simulation. And as you can see, the Antonio Conte dream is over. Tottenham, after just finishing 8th in the Premier League, are now managed by Jurgen Klopp. How on earth has that happened? Let's have a little look. Antonio Conte was sacked. After four years and 215 days in charge, he was sacked on the 1st of February 2025 and he was replaced a month later by Jurgen Klopp. Let's see where Spurs were when Antonio Conte got the chop. So he left on the 1st of Feb 2025. Let's see the table on that day. It looks like things were going very, very poorly. On the 1st of Feb, they were beaten in the North London derby by Arsenal, leaving them in 12th position, their lowest position of the season in total. And after a North London crushing derby day defeat, Antonio Conte was sacked. I mean, it looks like it's been a woeful season, considering they've been consistently getting in the top four bar the season prior. For their highest position all campaign to be 7th is absolutely shocking. A woeful season for Antonio Conte and that is why he has been sacked as Tottenham manager. So after four and a bit years, the dream is over. But the dream did have a high point, the 2024 FA Cup trophy. That was as good as it's got for Tottenham, but considering how bad things have been in recent years, I don't think they can complain one bit. If Antonio Conte can deliver a trophy to Tottenham, then he will be considered an absolute roaring success. But is that going to happen? But we are going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Let me know how you think Antonio Conte is going to get on at Tottenham. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Alexpo. And until next time, we will see you around.